I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And today we uh, will be introduced to Tracy Bryant. And Tracy, I'm so appreciative of you coming down a little bit of a trip in this bad weather and coming and sharing your story. Okay. Tracy is uh, kind of a recent uh, con convert, so to speak, to Christianity. And so uh, and a very interesting story you have. Where, you, you weren't, uh, where were you born? Yuma, Arizona. Oh, ah, okay. And did you live there very long? I um, lived there for the first seven to ten years of my life, and then yeah. we moved around the country a little bit, and then mostly were back and forth into Arizona. Oh, okay. Yeah. Beautiful country down there, I guess, mm -hmm. and a little deserty, of course. But <laughs> So uh, you weren't born in the church, is that right? No, we're converts to the church. Okay, and how old were you when you were approached, <laughs> I guess, or your family when they were approached by the missionaries? Um, I was nine years old. It was okay. 1975. Yeah. And we were living in Sacramento, California. Oh, were you? Mm -hmm. And uh, did you, were you given the lessons at, at that young age? Or how did you, they just decided you were going <laughs> to become a member, right? Um, my mother met and married a man who was a, a Mormon, who was LDS. And his parents um, introduced us to the church and to the missionaries. Yeah. And they taught us, we went to the church to be um taught the discussions back then they were the flip charts okay and you and, were included uh, in that i we okay. i was there and my my brother who was eight years old at the time was there and my mother mm. um i remember distinctly um being in a um <clears throat> the those kind of chairs that you have at school with the desk oh, on yeah. them and leaning so far forward to hear what the missionaries had to say that i almost fell over <laughs> i we, we were we just bought a hook line and sinker yeah and then were baptized very shortly after that oh. um into the church wow and um, so you started your journey in Mormonism. I guess you went to primary and Sunday mm -hmm. school and all the yeah. kind of things. Did you take seminary? In um, high I took seminary in high school. Um, I we did move around the country a little bit because my mother was married to a man that was in the military. So um, sometimes it was a little hit and miss just because I would um, go into school in the middle of a school year, um, things like that. But um, yeah. yeah, I did go to seminary. I was going to ask, what were your were your do you? <laughs> Was your were your family uh, were they religious before you? Uh, the my mother, came along? my mother had been searching for religion pretty much her whole life. Like when I knew her, she was. We went to Christian Science reading rooms. We oh. investigated Seventh Adventists. I mean everything you, were you can aware think of, of her under the searching scene. and stuff. Huh? Yeah, she just and she felt like when she um, found the Mormon Church that she'd finally found it. The, the, so, the only true the church. The only true huh? church. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you go through in seminary. Any questions ever come up uh, about? Um, not things? not a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Our family were very science minded, so um, things like the your, the Earth being six thousand years old, or Adam and Eve having different numbers of ribs, or things of that nature, never <laughs> bo never bothered me. But I just kind of it, and it didn't bother me, and it didn't affect my yeah. testimony of no. God or we Jesus. You will get, or, get you know, to know some of that yeah. stuff later. Later on, on yeah, yeah. So uh, you get into high school or out of high school, what happens next? So I went to BYU to go to college. Mm. And at that time I was, you know, everything was church. You know, you went to 
of course, I was church every Sunday. I was a, mm-hmm. the um, <clears throat> family home evening um, in charge person for that, a coordinator, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, at BYU. And everything was just wrapped up in the church there while I was there. So your testimony was, what would you say about your testimony? Oh, just solid. Yeah. I was all in. I believed everything I was told. Yeah. believed the 14-year-old Joseph went into the grove, um, everything. Yeah. yeah. Book of Mormon, it. I guess you'd read that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I read the Book of Mormon, and... prayed about it. I um, Spencer W. Kimball was the prophet while yeah. I was at BYU, and his voice was over the um, um, the um, loudspeakers yeah. at, at BYU all the time. And, yeah. Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just little messages mm-hmm. or something? Yeah. yeah, you'd be stopped while you were going to class. We'd, they'd stop, and you'd pray. And then you could keep going to class. Oh, so, yeah. oh I didn't know that. Yeah. We didn't do that at the U. Yeah. <laughs> did so did uh, any questions ever come up at, at college? No, I think I felt a lot of times just I was trying so hard to do everything right and, and yeah. you know, go to all my meetings and read my scriptures and pray and feel, fulfill my callings and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I was so wrapped up in all that. I don't think that I really had time to think too much about it, really. Mm-hmm. You did have an interesting reaction to when the church came out with the, with the earrings. Yeah. Tell us yeah. about that. I remember that, um, I think it was, was it President Hinckley? I think it was that said that um, women should only have one earring and that men should have none and no tattoos. Mm-hmm. Um, I took my second set of earrings out the next day. Just, just didn't bother me. Just so obedient mm-hmm. and faithful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they told me what to do and I did it. <laughs> So, how high do you want right, to jump? Right, exactly. How high should I jump? <laughs> well, what happens next then? You, you date or? Um, yeah, so I, I left BYU, BYU and went to Weaver State um, to finish my oh, degree, okay. Weaver State University, and I, I was less active there. Um, <clears throat> but oh, I'm, Why was that? Um, was mostly that? because it wasn't, the indoctrination wasn't like it was at BYU. There, oh. I met a lot of different other different people. Going to church wasn't as important to me. Um, I was working, um, going to school, had just busy, a lot of friends, yeah. just busy. Yeah. Um, and so it wasn't as big a part of my life while I was there. Hmm. Uh, but I met my husband. At, um, we dated for a while, got married. Yeah. Um, and he is not, well, he was no religion at all when I met him. But I told him that I was LDS and that if I got married and had children that I would want to raise them LDS. And, and he, he said that he wasn't was a problem at all. Yeah, he said that was no big deal. Now you eventually go through the temple. Yeah. <clears throat> so for years my husband went to church with us and uh, did all these things, but he never was baptized. And he had the missionary discussions, I want to say, three times oh, before he... Just never clicked for Never, him, huh? just, never, yeah. People, like Bishops tried to give him callings and things because yeah, they thought he was a member. Can. Yeah, oh, <laughs> and he would say, I, I don't think I can do that. Yeah. So um, so then he finally got um, baptized, and then about a year later, we went through the oh, temple. Oh, he did finally get baptized. Oh, yeah. Third and time's the charm Third time's the charm. <laughs> wow. And so about, uh, that was about 2001, and we went through the temple as a family. My youngest was three years so old. He, he remembers it. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, they, yeah, they remember it. And have the kids sell to us. What, what did you think of the temple experience? It's been, yeah. been your first time going through, mm-hmm. I guess. So yeah, I you know was what, it what I, you thought it was going to be? I didn't. You know, they don't tell you too much, as no. you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but I, it didn't bother me. I had a lot of people I know that would come out and tell them, tell me that they're like, "What Shocked. church did I just <laughs> join?" You know, they were really, yeah. um, really upset by it, and it just didn't. It didn't bother me. It mm-hmm. kind of. I was like, okay, this this is right. This is mm-hmm. how it's supposed to be. And any questions I have, I'll figure out as I keep going yeah. back and yeah. learning. Yeah. Uh, it's probably more the way I looked at it too. Yeah, I didn't, it just didn't it bother me. Yeah, it wasn't shocking. It was mm-hmm. a little strange, but mm-hmm. it figured it. Well, and my husband out, was in sure. a fraternity, and I was in a sorority, and so a little bit of some of the things that went on in the temple were the initi- familiar. Initiation yeah. stuff. Yeah, oh, we're kind of familiar <laughs> to us. We were kind of like, okay. Oh, I had you never know. thought of that analogy. I but, think that's how you know, we were thinking of it. You know, so Join yeah. the club and get initiated. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess. So, uh, okay, then what, what's next? <laughs> um, so um, we just dove in. I mean, we were busy. We had young children um, working um, and just doing, going to church, well, doing our callings. callings. In the primary, mm-hmm. uh, I had a lot of primary club, callings. Club I did Cub leader. Scouts for a long time, did and you? I loved it. Did I you? loved it, loved it. And then mother. Huh? Yeah, 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 and I had my little, my boys, you know, I was Cub Scout leader when they were little when boys, they, yeah. and so that was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I did activity days when my daughter was about that age, too, okay. and 
um, knew the little neighbor kids through all that, and it was just fun, and I enjoyed it. Okay, so I guess the big question, what happens? So, to, let's see, <laughs> <laughs> really 2015 happened. Um, so this is just so recent for you. It's really it? recent yeah. for me. So probably to back up just a little bit, my um, I have a niece I'm very close to. I'm very close to all my, my nieces and nephews um, who is gay. And she came out um, to us probably like just a few years before that. Mm. Um, it, but it didn't bother me. I was fine with it. I, I It just wasn't a big deal. And then the um, policy change in November 2015 happened. And I was in church, <clears throat> and they had taken all the primary um, teachers out of primary during sharing time, taken us all into a room. And I remember they had us um, stand in a circle, um, had our arms folded, our um, heads bowed, told us um, about the change um, in, that was going to happen with regarding gay people and their children. Maybe it would be appropriate for you to share what, that, what they said then. So what they said at that time was that... Um, that the children of um, gay couples or gay members of the church would not be allowed to be baptized or blessed or yeah, um, yeah or any of the other or be involved in any of the other things of of the church and particularly the ones that stuck stood out to me were the saving ordinances like baptism um and getting priesthood so the um, ma young men couldn't get priesthood mm -hmm. And they had yeah. to wait until what? They were 18. They right? had to be 18, and if they were, and if they wanted to like go on a mission or any of those things, they had to disavow their parents. Um, and I remember being, it was being read to us, and I remember having my head bowed and just tears streaming down my face. Um, I was so upset. Uh, and I couldn't I, even believe when I read it that uh, the church could even think about coming out with something like uh, that. It was so upsetting. Now, I um, may not be yeah. aware. Have they changed that position at all? Mm -mm, still not as far as I know. And it's still, they still have to, they have to disavow their parents and they can't live in the same home as their gay parents either. If they, I mean, after they're 18. Mm -hmm. If they, once they turn 18. Because up to 18, they can't, it doesn't matter because no. mm -hmm. they can't do anything anyway. But mm -hmm. after 18, they have to leave their parents, mm -hmm. disavow their beliefs or disavow mm -hmm. them. Their gay lifestyle. Their gay and lifestyle. then I think that's how they phrased it. And then um, they have to um, leave their parents' home. And then like if they want to go on a mission, um, then they will leave. Um, and I believe that that's the way that they have to, have to live their lives is. So you were upset at this. Did you notice anyone else in the... That's an interesting thing to be in a circle, I guess. It's yeah. Almost a prayer circle. It but, was almost uh, a lot like that, and but, it was, yeah, it was... I just remember being... I, I remember being very upset. I was shaking. I was bawling, and I don't think I was really paying much attention to what other people were feeling no. because I just knew that I had this unique situation with my niece. Sure. Um, and I, I just felt like well, your heart Nobody goes would under out. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't feel like anybody would understand how how horrifying that was. Yeah. That I I felt well, how I felt was that I was going to have to disavow my niece in sure. order to stay a good true member of the church. Well, she would have to disavow. Well, she so <laughs> she's yeah, so she's not a, you know, they're not none of my family is are oh, none of my family is true believing members of the church. None of them were in the church. I was, no. my mother and I were the only ones hanging on with bloody fingernails. <laughs> Everybody else had been out, had really didn't have anything to do with the church, didn't really care about any of this. Um, but it broke my heart. Yeah. What did you think of Jesus at this point, both as an LDS, or as an LDS, and then maybe even this news? <clears throat> so, be, so before I believed everything I was told, Jesus was our exemplar, our savior, our the person that we look to, our older brother. Our brother. The person that we looked to, we were to follow in his pattern and in his footsteps. Um, so I believed all of that. I remember distinctly thinking that I could not believe in a God or a Jesus that would um, make some sort of policy towards. I just, I couldn't believe it. Especially in it. Now knowing what we know about the Bible and what he really, yeah. how he really lived, it does seem yeah. kind of strange, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it was, it, I had a really, that part was I felt like a really turning point for me because yeah. I could have just turned my back on Jesus altogether at that point because I was I, I was like I cannot believe in a God that would do this. Yeah. Because you're still believing the church is true mm -hmm. 
but then you start questioning even the existence of God mm -hmm. or him being involved in all this. Mm -hmm. Did you notice Jesus in or in the temple? Did you, what, what sense did you have of him in, in the temple? You know, that's interesting because I actually didn't think about this until the, this last little bit that yeah. I've been coming out of Mormonism. I feel like Jesus was kind of tacked on at the end. Didn't you too? And that's I did. I, felt. I remember thinking everything is this whole thing that we're going through in the temple and at the very very end they tack on a little bit about Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross it was this little part at the very end of it <laughs> so but I didn't I don't know that I really thought about that until later yeah when I was looking into it and going you know Jesus really isn't in that it's, ceremony yeah it's it's funny how when we can look back now we see how little he is in everything it, mm -hmm. it's just so 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 that upset you. What did you do with that information then? And so the first thing I did was I went home and I told my husband about it and um, got on my knees and I cried and I prayed and I read the scriptures. And When you say the scriptures, what is so it? Like Book, Book of Mormon, Mormon <laughs> Doctor and Covenant, Doctor and Covenant. <laughs> looking for answers or yeah, something. Yeah, I did yeah. read the Bible, but, um, you know, we're led to believe the Bible is suspect and yeah, not to so be trusted. You, you can't so trust it. Yeah, and prayed a lot and and uh, really wanted to understand because I at that time still believed that the prophet spoke to God oh, and sure. so it never occurred to me to say well the prophet is saying this the prophet's wrong I thought well God's wrong it, you yeah. know that's how much yeah. I associated um, funny, the prophet it? with God yeah yeah that he was always correct and <laughs> so did uh, what happened then did you did you quit going to church or you not kept going not right or? away so I think that was in November um, so I started um, doing mostly praying and reading scriptures and things and then I started looking around on the internet mm -hmm. and um, found some of course information I have a son who has been kind of on me for a lot of years about um, church history things like um, Joseph Smith and the rock stuff? and the hat. He, he knew things and he wow. would say things to me and I would just be like, I don't want to hear it. I yeah. don't, don't talk to me about that. That's not true. I don't want to hear any of this stuff. It's all anti-Mormon It's stuff. all anti-Mormon. No. I stayed away from it like yeah. I was taught. Yeah. And um, as soon as I started looking, of course, I found a lot of information on the internet. Yeah. Um, I found your um, YouTube site. Oh. Um, and then I found myself trying to figure out what, if anything, to do about the information that I was learning. Mm -hmm. um, and so that went into probably December, f January of the next year. Um, and as things went on, it just got worse and worse and worse. So this was just um, about a year ago or so. Yeah, right? yeah. It will be a year in um, Easter was the last time I attended church, an LDS church. Oh. So, yeah, it's been, it went, it felt like everything unraveled really quickly Yeah. at that point. Um, Did you start learning? I call all of that stuff we learn on the internet the bad news, and the good news is Jesus and grace mm -hmm. and stuff. Had you yeah. ever understood grace before? Not in not in the sense that I do now. Yeah. Um, at the time, I still believed that it was grace, but I had stuff I had to do as well. You mentioned the parable of the, yeah. of the bicycle. Yeah, where we, we do as much as we can, and, Jesus, and then Jesus takes up the slack. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's so different yeah, now, it, isn't it? It is you, really different. When you realize who Jesus is and what he did for yeah. us. Yeah. Now you explained kind of in to me a little earlier that you really haven't had what you'd call a big water, a, a big uh, born again moment, no, and I haven't yeah. either. Okay. So, <laughs> so I think that's doable. Mm -hmm. But you're you're a new creature. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Oh, you see yes. things differently. You mm -hmm. understand things differently. Yes. Talk talk to uh, about that a little bit. Well, I just I just now know that the the huge huge sacrifice that Jesus did for us was on the cross right. that and that that is everything it's there's not anything that I bring to the table you know it's his I righteousness can, it's right? his I, I know it's there's nothing there I I spent most of my church time believing that if I was good enough of course if I checked the boxes if I went to church and read right. my scriptures and did my callings and paid my tithing and went to the temple did all those things <laughs> I was guaranteed a spot oh yeah <laughs> and that's I, the promise and then it? but in all those things that I just said not one of them is believe that Jesus died for me yeah. and that he did it all and took it all on him my yoke is easy my burden is light <laughs> and and yeah and I thought that I that I could do it. What made that little transition? That must have been a moment in time, though, for you to 
say, wow, I, I'm seeing this differently now. Well, and it's really um, my, my new pastor and my new church um, opened my eyes to that because I didn't, I didn't really understand yeah. any of the, um, the things that Christians know and, right. and believe. Well, isn't that what you were kind of saying when, we, when we're good Mormons and then we come to realize the church isn't true? We don't have a foundation in Jesus. We don't trust the Bible. So now what? Now what, exactly. Yeah, so what, what, how did you find your church? And what, how was it going the first time? That must have been a unique Yeah, it was for me. <laughs> so I, I left. Um, I had found this church. Um, it's in, it was in my neighborhood. They, have, they had signs up and things. Um, and the day that I decided I was not going to go anymore, I left church that day and I drove over there. What moment. Oh, it was, yeah, I, I left church. I got in my car and I drove over there and I thought, oh, for sure, surely nobody Heart goes pounding. here. I know. <laughs> yes, out of my chest. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, surely nobody goes there. I mean, yeah. nobody goes there, right? And so I went there and there was a lot of cars in the parking lot. I thought, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and it was at the end of the service, so people were leaving, and I sat in my car for a few minutes, stealing my resolve. Mm -hmm. And probably the hardest thing I ever did in my life was to walk across right. that threshold into and that church. It. Yeah, had a cross on it, probably. It did, and I walked in, and were you wearing a dress? I was. I was oh, dressed in my. <laughs> I was dressed in my LDS church clothes, sure. and I walked in, and at the at, um, I walked into the sanctuary, which yeah. I didn't know what it was called no. at the time, yeah. and walked up, and there were these three women sitting at the front of the church, and I stilled my resolve and walked up there. And yes, how brave is that? Oh, it was so, proud of you. <laughs> so hard. It was so hard, and I walked up there, and they sat out. I they said had me sit down and talk to me for a few minutes, and all three of them were ex Mormons. <laughs> yeah. Isn't God great? He just absolutely. Okay, come on. I've got these three ladies just sitting for you. And I could not have met more wonderful women. And they sat down they and prayed with me and, and prayed with you. Talked to me. Isn't that unique? It was awesome. Yeah, that's what our pastor did the first time. He put his arms around me and Carla and just prayed with us. Yeah, there's something really powerful when somebody says they'll pray with you yeah. um, versus pray for you. I mean, being saying you're going to pray for somebody is awesome, but when somebody says they're going to pray with you, that yeah. is just so powerful. Yeah, is. They held my hand, they prayed, <laughs> and I was, I just felt like, okay, this is, this is where I need, where I'm supposed to be. This yeah. is, this is where the Lord has led me to, yeah. to be so that I don't walk off a cliff without a yeah. net. Isn't so it deep? was wonderful. Yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, I, I, for the audience and for those maybe Mormons, hopefully, that are listening to this, it's just, um, there's just no denying what's happened, right? I mean, there's no, nothing now in the good news that would bring us back to accept all of that bad news of mm -hmm. Book of Abraham and oh, Book okay. of Mormon <laughs> and, uh, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Even the temple now, do you, have you, I don't know what you studied about that, oh, but the goodness. temple is so different. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at it now and I realize that it's the teachings of a man and yeah. not the teachings of God. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just amazing. a completely different yeah. um, thing to me. What do you think the Mormons most misunderstand then? I about? think that um, the big thing that I probably hear the most is that um, we can just believe in Jesus and we don't have to do anything else and we'll be saved. Well, that's true. Oh, eat, drink, and be merry. Mm, and of yeah, thing, yeah. Be, right. And I think there was some. I I don't know that I'm going to do this justice, but there's some phrase that I heard about Christians can believe in Jesus and live like hell and go to heaven, oh, or yeah. you know. And um, but what I've learned is that the reverse is true. So that once you've you've accepted Jesus and who He is and what He's done for us, yeah. that now you want to go and do what he did yeah. and, and help the needy and feed the poor and, and all yeah. those things rather than doing it first and hoping that he'll, you Bless know, us. Well, yeah, do, you know, we would do good works because we've been saved and because we love God and our fellow man. Mm -hmm. One thing that also okay. struck me was, was the judging and the pride issue. Did you deal with that much at all? Well, I did. And I have to tell you, so my, um, my nephew one time through my, ch my son once told my son that he thought that I was judgmental while I was a Mormon. What a shock. I know. I, it, well, it upset me. And my son are, told though, me. aren't we? Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I was going to heaven for sure. Right. Yeah, and if you're sinning and you're not going to church and you're mm -hmm. not doing what you're supposed to, yeah. you know, we just judge and then mm -hmm. the pride that we're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you, what did your son say? Well, he did, he told me that he, Brandon said he thought I was judgmental and I was 
I was horrified by that. It was very upsetting. Yeah. Um, Is I this hope, when you were a good actor? This was, member, yeah. yeah. This okay. was before I, yeah. it was actually before the, the policy change, I think, oh, too, okay. even. Yeah. Um, my niece had come out recently, and I think that was yeah. part of it, too. Okay. So, but yeah, I, I like to think I'm a little less judgmental because <laughs> I realize we're all sinners. Well, we're more accepting yeah. of people and their flaws and, mm. and, and things so well because we're all flawed that's yeah. The thing. yeah did you know that as a mormon <laughs> no. i didn't either no. I, I knew i wasn't perfect as no. we always say yeah. but i never realized i was a sinner in need of a savior no yeah. and uh well believe it or not our time's getting close yeah. already mm -hmm. what would you say to your family friends and and the, those out there um i think i would just like to say that i'm happier now i'm happier being a christian i'm i believe in jesus i I love the sacrifice on the cross. I love what I'm learning yeah. in the Bible. Um, I love people. I love being able to do um, uh, things for other people that are not told to me to do. You know, I'm waiting for an assignment to go right. and do something. Now I <laughs> waiting can, for your next yeah, calling. <laughs> right now, I can go out and and pray and have the Lord. Um, lead me to where he wants me to go yeah. and what he wants me to do with my time and effort and talents and yeah. that's been freeing and I love it. It's you mentioned prayer earlier to, to me maybe I didn't know if I came up here but prayers are different now aren't they? Prayers are very different. Yeah Yeah. I, I spent way? a lot of time in primary teaching children how to pray yeah. um, with uh, certain steps that you had to go through to pray and now it's just it's an open an open way of inviting the Lord into a conversation yeah. with me. So we feel that close relationship, don't we? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned in a funny way about all these men in between you and God. Yeah. Say, yeah. restate that for us. <laughs> so when I was well, when I was a Mormon, I had a lot of people between me and my relationship with Jesus Christ. I had um, a patriarch, and a family, and a, yeah, for nothing else, yeah. and a bishop, yeah. state president, yeah. and seventies, and yeah. for general authorities, and a prophet, and everybody. And now there's just my relationship with Christ, and wow. it's wonderful. That's so freeing. And it is very freeing. You know, what would be really fun is in about ten years we get together and do this again, and you tell us how your journey's been because it's just a year. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you come to the knowledge of that, then then the doors are open. Heaven seems open. I mean, you just understand uh, what a beauty the, this good news is. Mm -hmm. And it is good it's news. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, gosh, Tracy, we're we're done, I guess, and uh, really appreciate you coming up and sharing your story. And um, I hope somebody will listen to this and kind of think yeah. maybe maybe there's something there that I'm missing. Yeah. Because you're a lovely young lady oh. and got lots to share. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.